A fire is every RVer's nightmare. Don't let this happen to you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, I'm sure that the people that own this RV are not living amazing or feeling amazing right now. Our, our hearts are just broken to have seen this camper actually burn up just yesterday. We're gonna share some tips of what you can do, if anything, to prevent a fire in your camper plus what to do and what not to do if you see your neighbor's RV catch fire. So we were sitting in our rig about, what are we, four sites down that way. We hear this horn sounding. It's just, it's like somebody's laying on their horn. And I, I turned to Liz and I said, what is that? What's going on out there? And I said, I'm gonna go out and see what's going on. Maybe somebody needs, you said, maybe somebody yeah. needs help. I said, well, maybe it's an emergency and somebody's leaning on their horn. And then we go out and we see this. The fire was in the front and the gas tanks more to the rear. Because I was just thinking, you know, if, this, if that fire gets to the gas tank, all hell's gonna break loose. Luckily, they got here in time. Again, our hearts go out to the owners. I just can't imagine. So in, in the good news is that they were not home and they had their pets with them too. So there were no lives lost, but I just can't imagine, like they'd probably spent a day exploring the area and to come home to this, how absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah, I mean, it would be heart heartbreaking if you were here and watched it burn, but I mean, just, yeah, coming back, coming back to this, it just, oh. Or... Well, here's the real thing that makes me just sit up and take notice, is that Paul and I have been on the road for three and a half years as full-time RVers, and this is not the first burnt out husk we've seen. It's the first actual live fire we've seen, but we saw another one in a campground where it was just a shell and the refrigerator caught fire. And then we saw two in a dealership that were brand new class A diesel pushers. Yeah, new Mars. Not to be over dramatic, but this video could save your life. Yeah, after seeing four burned out RVs, we know how serious this can be. Well, welcome to Bob Malbacher. He is a retired firefighter and a former fire chief. Yeah, welcome and thanks for doing this for us, Bob. Thank you for having me, Paul and Liz. Every RV owner's biggest fear is, you know, what if my rig catches fire? We know that they're, they go up just like that. So, what prevention tips do you have for camper owners? Well, first, First and foremost, life safety is the most important thing there is. If you can get away and get out of the RV, that is the most important thing is to save your life first. The equipment, the rig, everything else can be replaced. There are some situations where you're just not going to be able to prevent a fire. I mean, that's the reality. The problem is, is that there's, there's wires running all over these coaches and and even the uh, towables like we have and it, all it takes is for one wire to be routed uh, improperly chafe on some metal part and uh, once it gets through the insulation it gets the copper heat happens i mean sparks and heat happen and fires come out of that class a b and c motorhomes are tougher because they have an engine on them towables are different in themselves because they carry propane most of the time. Follow the manufacturer's instructions on maintaining all of your appliances and all of your rigs essential components. If it's a class A, B or C, make sure that you're, you're doing all the maintenance on the engine and you're doing all of the uh, maintenance on the axles, the bearings, anything that heats up if the axles heat up and the brakes heat up, that could cause a brake fire, which could very easily go right into the RV. That is the first line of defense. If you get a recall notice on your rig or your, your motorhome or your trailer, whatever it is, get it handled as quickly as possible. We've had two on our grand design and they were both fire related and they were both related to the refrigerator. One was the gas line that was too close to the heat box. 
and uh, they had to reroute that. And the other was an electrical wire that was run, again, too close to the heat box. Know that we've only had our rake two years. So that's two serious recalls in two years. Yeah. I retired from the auto industry, and, and so I'm very familiar with recalls. Recalls are always serious. They don't do a recall unless it's serious. Alert systems. You have carbon monoxide detectors, smoke alarms. One of the things that I found when we pr purchased ours was I didn't feel comfortable that it had enough. So I added smoke alarms in our storage bays. We added a uh, second carbon monoxide detector. We had one down in the living area, but we also wanted one up in the sleeping area. We also have an LP propane detector. Carbon monoxide and propane are heavier than air. So they're going to gather around the floor areas first. So you want those detectors no higher than your sleeping area. Smoke is actually lighter than air. That's why you find them on your ceiling. Pets, we use a monitoring system. We will get alerts. Say the AC goes off. The alert system will let us know that the AC has gone off, the temperature is rising. In a fire, it will rise quickly and it will let us know that. The electrical system, we use a surge protector off the pedestal. It's got an emergency power off. This way, if we exceed our power limits from the pedestal, it'll shut off. The surge protector will also prevent spikes from the campground, low voltage from the campground. So you want to really make sure your electrical system is protected. Don't overload the circuits. There are products that I don't have or use that I've seen other full-time RVers install. I can't comment on them because I don't have them, but they seem to be um, good first line defense. You can put them in where the batteries are. You can put them in engine compartments for the class A's. They are a fire suppression system. I would research that if it's good for you, a good application for your RV, that would be great. I just have not researched them enough to uh, recommend them or, or, or not. Maintain your refrigerator ventilation. You want to maintain your air conditioners, your furnace. Funny thing about our furnace and water heater. We were going across Nebraska and we actually started with the migration of the Miller moths. And Miller moths like to hide in little crevices and they were getting into our exhaust for our heater and water heater. I had to clean them out every time we had to use them. So you, you want to make sure you maintain those things too. I know you have e-bikes and uh, I have an e-bike and I don't like to charge my e-bike battery inside my coach. Once in a while I will, as long as I'm awake, I won't do it while I'm sleeping. I will plug it into either the pedestal or I'll plug it into the outside outlet. We use the recommended battery, we use the recommended charger, and so I feel more comfortable with that than buying an aftermarket charger or something like that. You don't, you don't want to uh, mix and match with those things. One of the things that I notice in campsites, people will park the RV, it'll be so close to the fire ring, and they extend out their awning, and I've seen them underneath awnings a couple of times. You, you don't want to have your rig too close to the fire ring. If you have any type of uh, charcoal or propane grill, you want to keep that far enough away from the rig that you, the heat doesn't transfer over to the siding. As you can tell, in these RVs, it's not built like a sticks and bricks. If you do any type of work on the RV, you see the lightweight construction that they use. There's no way to prevent a fast moving fire in an RV once it gets going. If you can get it quickly, you have a better chance of stopping the fire. If it does get going, the best thing, like I said at the beginning was, get out, make sure everybody's far enough away, call 911, Make sure you know where you're at. In a lot of state parks and in a lot of uh, areas, you are going to be far away from a fire department. So evacuation is the best thing. All right, so now you're in a campground and you look a couple sites over and your neighbor's rig is on fire. What should you do and not do? What are some do's and don'ts? The first do is call 911. The quicker you can get somebody here to help you, the better off you are. 
try to find out if anybody was there inside try to get as much information as you can you could be putting yourself at danger if you try and get too close to it so my recommendation is to get as far away as possible let everybody else in the area know if there's another camper that's next to it have them evacuate because the radiant heat can go through the air into the next rv very easily i would not recommend trying to move equipment especially if it's hooked up to the rv if there's a vehicle close to it that the keys are readily available jump in and move that but that is about as far as i would go trying to put out an rv that is well involved you're not going to stop it with a garden hose a garden hose with only 45 to 55 pounds of pressure is not going to do much for a well-involved RV fire. Once again, thanks so much for doing this, Bob. Uh, these tips are going to be very helpful for, for our viewers and, and hopefully, you know, save a life sometime, someday. Yeah, they could save a life. Uh, it's my pleasure. Um, it's near and dear to my heart. And let us know in the comments if we missed any fire prevention tips. And if you happen to have used any of the fire suppression products that Bob mentioned, let us know as well.